We're going to dive right into it with the big one of the Arlington Park meeting. This is the field for the grade one Arlington million, a mile and a quarter on the world famous turf course. A million dollars is the purse. There's a scenario where, look, it's, it's a grade one on turf. Chad is going to be well represented. Chad Brown sends out a three headed monster in Almanar, Robert Bruce, as well as Money Multiplier. You had Europeans coming over. You had a horse like Century Dream. You had a horse like Doville. We know what they're capable of. The post time favorite, though, is Oscar Performance for Brian Lynch. He had won at a mile and a quarter at Arlington Park last year in the three-year-old restricted secretariat. We'll talk about this year's edition later on. Um, he was coming into this on the heels of a very impressive effort in the poker. But I had mentioned in the race, or going over the race in the preview edition last week anyway, that I was a little bit concerned, and I think he's just better off going shorter. I think he's better at a mile or a mile and a sixteenth or a mile and an eighth. He can win at a mile and a quarter. He's proven that, but I just happened to think he was better going shorter. That really didn't end up being why he ended up losing. We'll dive into that here in a little bit. But unfortunately, we can't show you the stretch run for reasons that many of you, I'm sure, are very, very well well aware of. But you can head over to YouTube. I believe it's on the Breeders' Cup channel. You can watch the stretch run of this year's Arlington Million, and you find out that Chad runs 1-2. He gets Robert Bruce into the winner's circle. He just nips Almanar late in the stretch. Century Dream runs third, is disqualified and placed fourth. Kachawen DA moves up into third spot. If you played the exacta, it comes back just under $20. If you play the trifecta, it comes over $150 with a little bit of change. Robert Bruce, let's talk about him a little bit. Chilean bred, he's 8 of 9 lifetime, $942,000 in career earnings, owned by, and I apologize if I butcher any of these pronunciations, Convento Viejo LLC, trained by Chad Brown, bred by Harris Convento Viejo, Viejo excuse me, in Chile. He's ridden to victory by Arad Ortiz Jr., and you can see the pedigree at the bottom of the horse card. He's by Fast Company out of an Orpin mare named Lady Pelusa. From a numbers standpoint, 104 buyer speed figure and 126 time form U.S. rating for Robert Bruce winning the Arlington Million. Timeform U.S. had the half, the three-quarters, and the mile calls, all color-coded red, helping a horse like Robert Bruce come from off of it, helping a horse like Almanar coming from off of it. And you know what? You probably want to upgrade a horse like Century Dream, who I know was disqualified and placed fourth, but he ran very well in this spot, I thought, as well. Almanar gets a 103 and a 125 Timeform U.S. rating. And let's start with those top two. Robert Bruce, uh, he was a horse that in the Manhattan, he just didn't get clear run until it was too late. He was in amongst horses, bounced around a little bit, I thought he was a prime contender coming in here. I picked him, and for this reason. I love the way that he finished. He galloped out with some gusto. He's the kind of horse that it looks like he could be anything, really. And and in a division that has been so so topsy-turvy, so up and down this year, maybe Robert Bruce is that sort of calming effect, that calming horse who can kind of right the ship and say, no, this is mine now. I'm here. These longer-distance races, I got it. Everybody else relax, because now I'm king. We'll find out. Perhaps there's a scenario where he goes on and does some good things. It sounds like the Joe Hirsch at a mile and a half, that's likely to be his next step. Interesting nugget thrown into, I believe this was in the follow-up for this race from Marcus Hirsch on DRF.com. Robert Bruce the Horse is not nominated to the Breeders' Cup. The Sire is also not nominated to the Breeders' Cup. His Sire would be Fast Company. Uh, That would mean that the Connections would need to supplement $200,000 to nominate him to the Breeders' Cup. Now, uh, that's a big chunk of change. The good news for them, I don't believe there is a another time frame on that. I'm not entirely certain. I'm, I'm not one that deals with the business side of things, so I, I don't know dates and, and things like that. But really, it doesn't. it almost feels like why wouldn't you just wait at this point if you are considering nominating? Wait until after the Joe Hirsch. If you run well there, then okay, nominate and you're good to go. You're only four or five weeks out of it. No real sense in doing it right now, I don't think. But again, from a business standpoint, that's something that's over my head. I don't know anything about that. All I know is if this horse were to run in a race like the Breeders' Cup, I think it'd be interesting. I think Chad has him in raging form. And really, his only blemish is that Manhattan where he just seemed a little bit unlucky and he might not get the best ride. Now, you you see what he's capable of when he's allowed to stretch his legs and get out into the career, uh, under the clear, rather. I think there's a real scenario where he even excels with more distance. Uh, I think Robert Bruce is a really, really talented horse, and I would expect bigger and better things for him going forward. On the flip side, Almanar, I thought he ran really well here. The 103 buyer, I believe that's right up there with one of his career top figs, if not a career top. Uh, the 125 time form U.S. rating, that's all strong as well. Chad says he is going to probably be turned back in distance. I believe to, the quote for Chad was, not feeling a mile and a half for Almanar. Uh, he's always felt that he's more of a mile and an eighth to a mile and a quarter, or a mile to a mile and a quarter kind of horse. Um, I, it's To me, 
I think there's a fascinating race for a horse like this, and the timing of it would be very, very intriguing as well. I would love to see him run in the Woodbine Mile. Now, I don't. there's nothing that has been reported about that, to my knowledge anyway, at this point. Um, I think Marcus Hirsch also, also pointed that out. That, uh, bleh, 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 pointed out that Almanar is owned by Shadwell, and Shadwell happens to be the presenting sponsor of the Shadwell Mile down at Keeneland coming up in October. So maybe that's a, a logical spot, and the Connections would like to see that. I would like to see him run in the Woodbine Mile for this reason specifically. I know a one-turn mile is not an easy configuration, and some horses take to it and some horses don't. But for a horse that feels like he might actually be better closer to that mile and an eighth, that long stretch at Woodbine, I think, would work to his advantage. It's a grade one. It usually gets a pretty good field, uh, a little bit of international flavor. Not that the race at Keeneland is, is a poor option, but I just do wonder if this is a scenario where kind of use that, that long stretch to your advantage where maybe that flat mile at Keeneland, you're playing other horses' game up there at Woodbine. Maybe that's something that you can take advantage of, having a little bit more stamina. And we know in those late stages of that stretch that just goes for, uh, forever in a day, maybe that's an interesting spot for a horse like Almanar. That's what I would be looking at. It's pretty good. Lines up about a month from now. But I'm sure Chad will place him in the appropriate position and put him where he belongs. Century Dream, thought this was a good effort here. I think he's a nice horse. Again, we talked about it, the mile and a quarter here. Those Europeans that are usually flat milers, they usually can successfully stretch out and get that little bit of extra distance here. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong there. Cacho and DA, great claim, great job for, uh, from the connections all around. He continues to make money for them. As far as the rest of the field is concerned, never been a big fan of Deauville, made clear of that. Money multiplier, he's, he's he doesn't feel like he's truly a grade one caliber runner, but at the end of the day, he's run really well in a number of different spots. Um, Oscar performance, he got bumped pretty good coming out of the gate by Robert Bruce. They broke from the outside. I don't know if that's why he didn't go on with it, but it sounds like he, he was eased by Jose Ortiz and Brian Lynch so far, and keep keep note of this and keep taking a look and see what's what. Doesn't look like there's anything noticeably wrong, and nothing has popped up. I believe he is going to Rudin and Riddle, and they're going to take a look and just go over him with a fine-tooth comb, but it just kind of looks like there was a, like a non-effort. So I'm not entirely sure what happened there, and I don't know the connections will ever find out. For one reason or another, Oscar Performance did not deliver his best. We know he is capable of much, much better on his best day. He would be the kind of horse that, to me, I would be more interested in shorter distances whenever he does come back. But again, the connections will do what they see fit with him when it's appropriate. If he needs a little bit of time off, they'll give him some time off. If he's ready to come back here in a month or two or whatever else it may be, they'll be ready to go there. Big effort from the top two for Chad anyway. Robert Bruce and Almanar, they both run bang-up races. Robert Bruce looks like he's stretching out in distance out to a race at a mile and a half. Sounds like Almanar will be cutting back in distance. Where that race ends up being, TBD. They both run big races in the Arlington Million. Robert Bruce, a 104 buyer and a 126 time form U.S. rating. Almanar, a 103 buyer and a 125 time form U.S. rating in this year's Arlington Million.